Today on Deep Dive, we're going to be looking at DC Comics Commandi number 2. Can Commandi escape the Tiger Kingdom? Find out inside this exciting issue. Hello everyone, my name is Devin, also known as DH Artist, and welcome back to my Deep Dive series. Today we'll be continuing the adventures of Commandi, the last boy on Earth. And if you missed my deep dive coverage of his previous issue, I'll link to it in the video description below. Now even though this can be viewed on your phone or computer, try casting it onto your TV so you can really see the detail and quality of the book. Since each issue is from my own collection, you can expect their conditions to vary. Today's book is in nice condition, so there won't be anything to detract from the artwork. If you enjoy these types of videos and want to see more content like it, check out some of my other deep dives. I've covered issues like Amazing Spider-Man number 67, Tales to Astonish number 44, Submariner number 1, and Thor number 160, featuring two of Marvel's epic cosmic beings, Galactus and Ego the Living Planet. For a complete list of my videos, visit the organized playlists on my channel. I post new comics each week, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss another issue. Commandi No. 2 was published in January of 1973. Editor was Jack Kirby. Cover artists were Jack Kirby and Mike Royer. The story titled Year of the Rat was written and penciled by Jack Kirby and inked and lettered by Mike Royer. The book consists of 32 pages with a cover price of 20 cents. Our story today resumes where we last left off. Commandi, having recently been captured by the Tiger King, has found new friends in Ben Boxer and Dr. Canis, the dog scientist. Commandi peers through a telescope focused on a strange sight off in the distance. For crawling around the ruins of the George Washington Bridge are scavenger rats, descending from their zeppelin carrying large crates. Ben explains that the Zeppelin belonged to a research team sent out by his people, and he was in the area searching for it. But before Ben can keep talking, Tiger Guards storm the room and attack Commandi and Ben, thinking they've escaped from their animal cages. As the Tigers tie up the humans, one of them goes to press the button on Ben's suit. But when Dr. Canis warns them not to touch it, the Tiger presses it anyway. Suddenly, in a brilliant burst of light, Ben's entire body becomes covered in metal. And though the tigers try to shoot him down, the bullets bounce off him like an armored tank. With a powerful throw, Ben tosses the two tiger men through the wall, knocking them unconscious. As Ben changes back into human form, Dr. Canis tells him and Commandi that they'll have to leave before more reinforcements arrive. Gathering up their gear, Ben and Commandi bid farewell to Dr. Canis and head underground to a river passageway. Following the underground river, they come to a mini-sub docked upon the bank. As they get in, Ben explains that he uses the sub to visit Dr. Canis without being seen, and with a flip of the switch, the sub descends beneath the surface. Skirting the riverbed, our heroes pass beneath a tiger search party unseen, and following the Hudson River, 
Ben and Kamandi travel through a sunken New York City. Before long, Kamandi notices that they're being shadowed by scuba diving rats. And before the rats can entrap the sub, Ben kicks the engines into overdrive and maneuvers it safely into an underwater cavern. Breaking the surface, they leave the sub to search for Ben's fellow teammates. But they don't get far before they're ambushed and taken prisoner by rats. Locked in a cage, Kamandi and Ben are loaded onto a modified subway train, and without resisting, they cautiously await their destination. Some of the fun advertising featured in this issue is a full-page ad for Daisy's Safari Mark I BB gun, there's a half-page ad for Sea Monkeys, there's a DC Christmas ad celebrating the return of Captain Marvel under the new name Shazam, and near the back there's an ad for The Shadow, coming soon from DC. When the rats bring them into a room, our pair is surprised to find the other members of Ben's team also taken prisoner. They explain that their lead-lined suits prevent them from turning into steel like Ben, and realizing he doesn't have his, Ben drops to the ground, activating his suit switch, and begins to transform. The power of the blast causes Kamandi's ropes to tear, freeing him, and acting quickly he fights back. As one of the rats nearly overpowers Kamandi, Ben knocks the rat aside with his steel arm. Kamandi watches as Ben and the other steel men make short work of the rats. As rat reinforcements block their escape, Ben uses his incredible strength to knock a hole in the wall. The men then jump to freedom with Kamandi, narrowly dodging a flamethrower. Kamandi and the steel men make their way across an open field, but the rats don't give chase because the field is full of landmines, and when they see a bright flash, they suspect that the fugitives are dead. Thankfully, the Flash was just Ben and the other men returning to original form. Just then, the giant Zeppelin makes its way into view, and bidding farewell to Kamandi, Ben and the other men begin their climb to the airship. Kamandi follows up one of the dangling ropes, and Ben quickly pulls him aboard. Rather than be left alone, Kamandi would take his chances with them. As the balloon makes its way through the sky, they chart a course for Ben's home. What's next for our heroes? Find out in the next issue, titled, The Thing That Grew on the Moon. Here's an interesting editorial by Jack Kirby titled, The Great Earth Cataclysm Syndrome. In it, he questions if every 10,000 years or so does the Earth recycle itself with a giant jolt, mentioning that the premise of Kamandi may not be that far off, as all signs point to natural disaster as being an ever-present facet of darkness in the history of man. He concludes with a wonderful analogy comparing mankind's future survival to that of a baseball team in the World Series. I'll share it in the community section of my channel if you'd like to read it later. I hope you enjoyed today's deep dive. If there's a particular issue or comic you'd like me to flip, drop it down in the comments section and I'll see if I can edit my pull box. If you enjoy these types of videos, please show your support by subscribing to my channel. As always, please consider liking and feel free to share this video. And until next time, deep divers, thanks for watching.